All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the introduction to investigation two. And then also let's take a look at 2.1, looking for squares. So first of all, let's kind of look into what we're gonna be investigating in this um, section. We're gonna look at a lot of squares. So in 2.1, our title is exactly that. We are looking for squares. Now we know what a square is, but make sure you have a definition of a square if you don't have a definition for a square. And it's pretty simple, right? A square is got four sides, it's a quadrilateral, but also, so if I just sketch one over here real quick, four right angles, and all the sides are equivalent. That's what a square looks like. And we're really just looking at squares in this investigation, okay? And we're looking also at these five by five. So this is a five by five because it goes one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five. Five by five dot grids. Okay, and we're going to be drawing um, as many squares as we can within that five by five dot grid. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to figure out how many squares we can draw. So let's go ahead and get started. So on that five by five dot grid, draw squares of various sizes by connecting dots. So first of all, you're using the five by five dot grids, which is in the form of a lab sheet that looks like this. And you're using those to draw as many um, squares as you can within that dot grid. For example, I'm gonna start off with the simplest one uh, and the simplest one is just going to be a one by one. So I'm going to just choose any four points and connect them together. That is a one by one square. And the instructions on part A say um, also draw squares as many different areas as possible. So we have one. Label each square with its area. Include at least two squares whose sides are not horizontal and vertical. All right, I'll give you an example of that, but here, this square has an area of one square unit. So a unit squared. So label them with their area. And for example, here's one that isn't horizontal. So right here is an example of a square that's a little horizontal. You see that it's a little bit bigger, but it's not horizontal. And we have to find the area. Now, since we don't know what those side lengths are, that's kind of our goal in this investigation to figure those out, we don't know what they are. We cannot measure them. The distance diagonally between dots is not the same as the distance straight up and down, left and right. And you can see that it's not this, the same, so we know that it's not one. Okay, but we can find the area using techniques that we used in the last investigation. Hey, if we take a look at the square around the square, you can find the area that way. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and find the area of this square. Start by finding the area of this square and then go through and see if you can't find as many squares as you can uh, draw within this five by five dot. However, I'm gonna tell you, um, there are eight total, but there's nine if you use the five by five itself, right? There's eight total, but nine if you use the five by five. Go ahead and see how many of them you can find and then find the area of each one. Okay, there are actually eight. There's not nine. Sorry, there's only eight. Um, but let's go ahead and check. I put them in order from smallest to biggest here. Make sure you have copies, good copies of these on your lab sheets. Um, clear copies because we're going to be using these quite a bit throughout this investigation. So I have one unit. You saw two units. It has those diagonals. You saw that. We can find the area by um, using those, by subtracting these out. Okay, uh, we've already done that. And then we have one, the two by two, which is four units. And then here, again, we don't know what these measurements are right here. We're gonna work on finding those, but we can still find the area by inscribing that within a larger square. So here is our larger square. Find the area of that large square and then subtract out those four 
um, try the areas of those four triangles, and that would give us five square units. Then we have eight square units, nine square units, 10 square units, and then we go all the way up to a four by four, which is 16. So again, make sure you have all of these there clearly uh, in your notes, uh, in your lab sheet or on graph paper somewhere, because we're gonna be referring back to these to help answer and solve other questions throughout this investigation. Okay, and then part two or part B on two point problem 2.1 says put them in order. They're in order like I have here. And then it says to go ahead and describe the side lengths. So it, I want you using the lab sheet for this reason because this dot paper is one centimeter dot paper. Meaning, so the distance from this point from here to here is one centimeter so now what you can do is you can go ahead and measure so on these that we couldn't find like here take your ruler a centimeter ruler and measure the distance from here to there okay and you also know that this is a square because if you look at the slopes right so this slope right here you go up one over one. So this has a slope of one to one. And this slope here, you go down one over one. So down one over one. This has a slope of negative one to one, which is the opposite reciprocal. So we know that they are in fact perpendicular. That's very important to understand. We've already gone over that. So now what I need you to do is go ahead and measure, take your centimeter ruler and measure the distance between these points. So measure the distance between this point and that point, and that will give these side length. This one we don't need to measure because the distance from there to there is in fact two centimeters. So go ahead and find all of these side lengths, and you are going to use the your ruler to measure the ones that you can't actually measure, all of these diagonal ones. Okay, make sure that we are all on the same page now. Uh, some of these are exact, like, for example, this one is going to be an exact. So that is just one centimeter there. Here, when you measured it, you should get something around one and a half. I don't know. Um, you know, you, you're, you shouldn't get just one. You shouldn't get just two. Somewhere around one and a half. 1.4 is a really good approximation. This one is exactly two. And then these are a little trickier. You should get something like two and a fourth on that one, two and a fourth centimeters. This one's a little bit bigger at 2.8, 2.9, not quite three. This one is three. This one is a little over three. And we know it needs to be over three because if this one back here had an area of nine, this has an area of 10, it makes sense that these sides are gonna be just a little bit longer. Now with an area of 16, the side length is just Four. So make sure if you had side lengths that are vastly different, make sure you correct those with these um, more accurate side lengths. Again, the ones that are diagonal are more of an approximation, um, but we're going to find out how to have find the exact answers uh, here in the next couple uh, sections. So make sure you have these um, approximate answers in your notes. And that is all for 2.1, looking for squares. If this is very important, again, make sure you have these eight squares in order, labeled like this with the area and then the side lengths, because we're going to be coming back to this in the next section.